Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video you will learn how you can implement a swipe to delete functionality like here. We can delete items in a list and it's also animated to push the other items to the top. That is what we will build. Let's dive right into it. Empty JPEG Compose Android Studio project right here. In this surface we are going to start. Let's remove this greeting first of all and these two greeting composable and previews. And in here, we're going to implement what we want. All the behavior we need for this swipe to dismiss functionality are already contained in Material 3, so we don't need any extra dependencies here. But what we need for that are two extra composables. And I will build this in a way that you can just copy paste this code in all of your projects and you can implement the swipe to delete behavior very, very easily. First of all, whoops, we need a composable for the delete background. So that is really the red background with the error, uh, not the error icon, with the delete icon on the right side. But you can completely adjust this to your need. If you want this green, you can make it green. If you want different icons, or if you want an animation there, you can all do this. The JPEG Compose API for this allows that. But what we need here is a swipe dismiss state, which is a dismiss state. We need to hit Alt Enter to opt into this experimental API as usual in Android. But with that, we have all the info we need to determine how this delete background looks like. On the one hand, we want to get the color of that delete background. That should be red if we are actually swiping and it should be transparent, so no color at all, if we're not swiping. So we don't see anything red if we're not actively swiping. So if swipe dismiss state dismiss direction is equal to dismiss direction and to start, so we want to swipe from the end to the start, so from right to left, if that's the case, the background is just color red and else it's color transparent. And then let's just have a box composable here with a modifier of modifier fill max size. We set the background color of that box to our color and we give it some padding of 16 dp. Alt enter to import dp. And in here we can then have our icon with an image vector of icons default delete so a little trash can content description can be null in this case and let's also set the tint to white so we have a white icon on red surface tint is color white like this we want this icon to attach to the very right of our background so we say content alignment is end actually center end and now that we have our delete background we want to create a so-called swipe to delete container. And I want to make this as generic as possible. So we're going to use a generic parameter T, which will refer to the type of item we are swiping away. In our example, those are just strings, so programming languages. But if you have more complex items, um, you can also use this container with these. Oops. So in here, we need an item, which are currently swiping. We have an on delete lambda, which gives us the item reference when we actually swiped it away. We want an animation duration, which is an integer and 500 milliseconds by default. So that is just uh, the duration of the animation when we swipe it away, how long it takes for the other items to move one level above. And last but not least, we want some content, which is a composable lambda, where we also pass in our T, so our type. That content will just be the actual composable content uh, that is shown in our list that we want to be able to swipe away. And first of all, in order to make this work, we need our dismiss state. Let's just call a state here. And we get this with remember dismiss state. Before that, we need a state called is removed. So we will actually change this to true when we swiped away an item. So we can perform the animation and we can also call on delete after a little delay, because if we would delete this item immediately, then it would also be immediately deleted from our list. But we first of all want to let it execute the animation. And after that animation has uh, is over, we can also delete it from our list and trigger this on delete lambda. So we want to have an a by remember function here. Remember and actually make this a var. And then here, mutable state off and false initially. So initially, each item is just not safe by default is not removed. How do we now know that an item was removed? Well, we can do this with this remember dismiss state function. This has a confirm value change, which is a lambda that triggers with the dismiss value, which just contains information about 
which direction we swiped into and when that just was um, confirmed when we know that the user really wanted to delete that item. And if this value is equal to dismiss value dismissed to start, so we swipe this to the left, then is removed is true, because then we know we swipe this item away and we return true here so that we kind of want to confirm this value change, that if it was dismissed to the start, then we say, hey, yes, then this item should now disappear and else just false. So in this case, you could of course also extend this that you have some other kind of um, UI options when the user swipes in the different directions, so to the end. Then we go below here and we want to have a swipe to dismiss container here, which takes in our state. It takes in our background we already have and some dismiss content. The background is just a composable with delete background and we pass in our state here like this. And the dismiss content is just our content composable. And we actually need to call it like that with our item that we pass to this function. That will already allow us to perform dismissing of our item, but we also want to have this animation. And we can implement this with an animated visibility. An animated visibility is a composable which we can pass a Boolean state to. So whether that item should be visible or not, which in this case is, is removed, negated. So if the item is not removed, that means we want to show what's inside here. And if it is removed, we want to hide this, but with an animation. And for this animation, we can also choose how that looks like. We can define an exit transition here, which in this case I want to have as shrink vertically. So I want this item to just shrink to the top. So we say the animation spec is a tween that allows us to define these duration millis, which we passed here, so animation duration, and we set shrink towards to alignment.top. So we make sure that our item will be um, sliding to the top. And we can also say plus fade out. So that way we mix this shrinking um, anim animation with a fade out animation to have both of these. I think that just looks cooler. Something we also want is we want to define the directions here to say, hey, we only want to be able to swipe to the left. So here we say dismiss direction and to start. That is the only direction we want to allow the user to swipe to. If you want to allow swiping in both directions, you can also remove this as I said, but in this case, we're implementing a swipe to delete functionality. So the last thing we want to implement here is we need to kind of trigger our on delete Lambda. When should we trigger this? Well, when is removed was switched to true, then animation duration time after that kind of. So what I mean is we need something like a launched effect block where we listen to this is removed boolean. And if is removed is true, so the launch effect block will trigger whenever is removed is changed from false to true in this case. And if that's the case, if we switch from false to true, then we want to delay this launch defect block by our animation duration. And after that, we trigger on delete with our item. And we also need to convert this to a long here. Ah, uh, to long. So we first give the animation time to play, and then we really delete this by calling this on delete lambda. And that is also what you would then propagate to your view model or to, to your database to really delete the item um, from, from the actual data set you're using in your app. So if we now go up here to our surface, we could create um, a val for our programming languages. So just some basic text is equal to remember. And in here we can use a mutable state list of strings. So let's just have Kotlin here and for more. So maybe Java, I like to delete that one. We could have C++, oops, C, not C sharp sharp, but C++ uh, and let's also have C sharp. And let's have, I don't know, JavaScript like this. So each of these would be one item in all this that, that we could delete. And in here, we'll then have a lazy column in order to show these different items. This lazy column will get a modifier of modifier dot fill max size. And we go in here, we can then have an items block with um, the text in a list of items. And we pass in these programming languages. We then get a reference to each language text and each item here in our lazy column now needs to be the swipe to, lead, uh, swipe to delete container. 
because each item could potentially be one that is deleted. So we say, swipe to delete container. The item is just our language. And since we made this generic, that works with any data type now. And on delete, here we will just take our programming languages list and we remove this language we're currently deleting. And here we also get a reference to the language where we just need to show the text for this language. So what we're actually showing in our list now goes inside of this block. Here we say language and we could also give this a bit more space. So modifier, modifier, fill max width, give it a background color of material theme, color scheme, background. And last but not least, let's give it some padding of 16 dp. And that should be everything we need. If we now launch this, minimize this and go to our running devices. So let's move this over here at our device. Then we should be able to see only C sharp. No, that is actually uh, the previous app. It's still a building. Now it's installing. Yes, there we go. We have Kotlin, Java, C++, C sharp and JavaScript. And we can actually delete this here. You can see everything works fine. And if we swipe this away, then I just accidentally uh, swiped away two items, but that also worked <laughs> so we can swipe this. And for some reason, it actually does remove two items at once. So I might need to check that. Maybe I forgot something. Let's delete this. Yes, okay, it, it always deletes two items. I will need to inspect this <laughs> and then I will get back to you. All right, I'm back. I forgot one very important thing and that is we need to assign keys to our lazy column items. Maybe you already noticed that, um, but that is something we have to do if we want to use the swipe to dismiss functionality. So a key is basically just um, one way to really uniquely identify one item in this lazy column. And in our case, we could do this just by the string itself since each string in our list is unique. If you have more complex objects, it's very often just the ID of each object, uh, object, how you also save it in your database. But in our case, it's really just the text itself. For some reason, Arrow Studio complains again, even though I already have this experimental annotation, I can edit again so it doesn't complain. But what we want to do is, we want to go to our lazy column in this items block, have our items on the one hand, but on the other hand, we also want to have our key. And here we just refer to the key itself, so the uh, to the string itself, I mean. If we now relaunch this, then hopefully it uh, now works. Let's take a look, swipe away C sharp. There we go. Ah, yes, now that works. And we can delete all these items if we relaunch it, and then we get them back. Like this, pretty cool. Pretty cool and easy way to implement this. And from now on, if you have your own products and you want, uh, you just want the swipe to delete functionality, all you need to do is you need to take these two composables and reuse it in your, your other product since you can use that completely flexibly with any type of item you might use in your list. And if you like Jetpack Compose as much as I do, then it can still quickly happen that you're making crucial mistakes and you actually don't really get the benefits out of it compared to XML. And that is why I've condensed 20 of the most important and most fatal mistakes into a free PDF you can just download for completely free down below. You will find the link for that in this video's description. So if that sounds cool to you, download that and avoid making these mistakes in the future again. Other than that, thanks so much for watching the video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.